do want to feel like we do want to feel like we are able to find um, an evenness to every single pose. Good. At the end of this next exhale, let's jump forward or walk forward. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees now, weight into your heels, rise up for Utkatasana, sitting down into a chair. Exhale, we're going to pick up your right foot, cross your right ankle to the top of the left side and sweep the arms back. And then sit back and down. And today, because we have been already doing that where we're bringing the ribs down to the thigh, you could also try that. That'll definitely increase the stretch on your right hip. Either way, so you don't have to do that, but if you are bringing the ribs down, make sure you're not shifting your weight into your left knee. The pelvis continues to pull back. Good, one more breath like that. And then slide your right foot to the floor, to the left side of your left foot, so that your right shin is crossed in front of your left. Sweep the arms overhead and take an inhale. Exhale to your left side. So you're gonna take your right arm over your right ear and left hand down. Lift your left foot up just a little bit, left heel up, I should say. Squeeze the inner thighs together strongly. Shift the whole pelvis to the right and reach your right arm even more to the left. Now, as you squeeze those sides together, feel Mula Bandha. And again, the left heel needs to be off the floor, at least a millimeter off the floor, so we don't hyperextend the back knee. You want to feel the Mula Bandha, feel the Uddiyana Bandha, mostly on the left side body as you dive a little deeper. Good. Reach up slowly, press your palms. Then clasp your hands together now. The back heel is going to stay off the floor. And we're squeezing the inner thighs together before we go anywhere further than this. Again, we're going to go into a back bend, lifting first. So we're getting taller and then reaching back with length. You don't go very, very far back here. You're not letting your head fall back. Your chin is reaching up. The crown of your head is reaching toward the wall behind you, not dropping toward the floor. Okay, really work those inner thighs. Take a final exhale here. Inhale, slowly rise up. Exhale, <clears throat> keep your hands clasped actually. Let's bring the torso as far forward as you can with the arms still clasped together over your head. When it feels like your back is rounding, sweep them behind you. Keep the back heel off the floor. And just like we did earlier, we're gonna hold in this halfway point. Taking one more inhale, then exhale, bring your hands down alongside the outer edges of both feet, push down through the palms and drape your body over your legs for this nice IT band stretch. Now, if you're in this pose and your left hip is dropping well below the right hip, you may not feel a lot here. So root down, we're gonna keep the, right, the left heel off the floor a little bit. That's the one that looks like your right one right now. Squeeze both inner thighs together, but lift the left hip up so that if, you're, if you do reach up, your hip bones are on the same line. Your left hip isn't below the right. Inner thighs engaging, outer thighs are stretching. Abs are engaging to draw the ribs closer to your thighs. Hamstrings are definitely stretching here. Keep the quads strong and of course, your lower back is stretching, so keep your abs working. Take a final exhale here. Push down more with the palms of your hands to help you pull the ribs in closer to your thighs. Then from here, take your inhale. Bring it into a halfway rise position. Plant the palms, jump back. So you're going to bend your knees, and as you jump back, of course, uncross the legs. Right? Exhale to chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Bring it back in on your exhale. Make sure you're hugging your right side body in strongly to feel supported. Last time, bring that knee in. 
Now slide your right knee back behind your right wrist. Slide the left leg back. Square off your left hip so the left hip points down. Your right sit bone will be off the floor. This is a variation on, on pigeon. Your right, I'm sorry, both hands are walking forward here. And we're draping the body over the right shin. So you may find you wanna stay up high or just come to the elbows and forearms. Keep the right foot active. You wanna be more on the edge of the foot instead of the top of your foot. Work the stretch of that right glute. This is for the piriformis muscles as well. So it feels like it's just wrapping underneath and then all the way up into the back of the glute. Feel all of that happening as well, right? Square off the hips slowly. So our intention is to dial the right uh, sit bone away from the ground and the left hip bone closer to the ground. If you have the flexibility, walk your arms further forward, drape your body all the way down to the earth. Take a final exhale here in pigeon pose. Then walk your hands slowly back into your right shin, stand up onto the left toes and step the right leg back. Inhale, high push up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Deep breath in and down dog. Exhale, all the air out. And once you're finished, jump your feet or walk your feet forward. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees again, weight into your heels, rise up, Utkatasana. Pick up your left foot, cross left ankle to top of right thigh and sweep the arms behind you. As we did earlier, you can bring your ribs all the way down. Keep the chest open, but the pelvis continues to pull back. Final exhale, sit a little deeper. Slide your left foot to the right side of the right foot. Sweep the arms overhead, take your inhale. Exhale, lift your right heel off the floor just a tiny bit and reach over to your right. The whole pelvis shifts to the left. So you can even do that manually, right? You can take your right hand and just kind of move the whole pelvis, not turning the pelvis, both hip bones stay squared. Shift it over. <laughs> don't push yourself over like I just did squeeze those thighs together then if you'd like to you can bring your right hand back down to the outside of the right thigh remember the right heel is lifted just a millimeter or two off the floor turn so that your left armpit faces the ceiling at least a little bit exhale the right shoulder as far away from the right ear as possible your left ear is coming, left arm is coming as close to parallel with the floor as possible. Then come up, inhale, clasp the hands. Exhale, squeeze your thighs together. Inhale, grow taller. Lift the rib cage. Stay tall, keep lifting, and reach back. Inner thighs engaging as strongly as they have up to this point. Pelvis forward, chin up, crown toward the back wall. It's not about going back far, okay? If you have that flexibility, absolutely. This is about negotiation between what's happening with your inner thighs and what's happening with the middle of your back. So if you're only feeling compression in your lower spine, don't go as far, okay? It's a really tiny back bend for real, okay? Take an inhale and slowly rise all the way back up to the sky. Keep your hands clasped as you dive forward. When the back begins to round, right, un unclasp your hands and reach the arms back. Back heel is still lifting. Inner thighs are still hugging in to midline as strongly as possible. One final inhale. And exhale, both hands down, folding in to the standing IT band stretch. Notice that the left hip wants to drop down and kind of cave in. We're gonna keep the left heel, sorry, your, yeah. That would be your right heel this time off of the floor. 
<laughs> and your left sit bone up. I don't do the stretch a lot because I literally cannot tell in this position which foot is which. Crown towards your toes. Both hip bones are on that same line again. Once you lift the hip up so that it does line up with the opposite one, you'll feel this a lot more. Make sure the quads and inner thighs are working, stretching out the outer thighs and hamstrings. Make sure your abs are working to support the stretch of, of your back. Final exhale, pull those ribs in closer to thighs. Inhale, slow extension. Plant your palms, jump back, uncrossing your legs as you jump. Exhale to Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, the left leg will rise. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, left leg up. And exhale, left knee in. One more time, extend. And bring it in. Slide your left knee back behind your left wrist. Slide your left shin forward to be as close to parallel with the front of your mat as you can. Flex your left foot. Make sure you're on the outer edge of your left foot to the best of your ability rather than just on the top of your left foot. Bring the top of your right foot to the ground and then again, just dial the pelvis around a bit. So that left glute stays off the floor. Left hip bone moves away from left thigh bone. Right hip bone points down. Walk your hands forward a bit. If at all possible, come down at least to one of your elbows. You don't need both hands on the ground, by the way. Both elbows down if possible. Hold here, feel the stretch. Breathe deeply to the sensation itself. Remember that yoga is teaching us to deliberately pay attention to what we're feeling. It's not teaching us to deliberately distract ourselves from feeling, but to actually feel whatever it is we're feeling. And once we get that feedback, we can decide to go further or we may decide we need to back off, right? But practice being with the sensation, breathing to the sensation, paying attention and listening, right? Listening to the feedback that your body is always giving you, especially when we're in a pose like this. This is the time to stay out of your head for sure. Two more breaths. Walk your hands back in, plant your palms. Step your, uh, stand up onto your right toes and step your left foot back. Inhale, high push up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up. And exhale, back. Full breath in and down, dog. And a strong, long exhale. Once you're empty, jump forward or walk forward. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Moving back into Utkatasana, inhale the arms up. Exhale into Garudasana, right knee over left. Tuck your right toes back behind your left Achilles tendon. Sweep your arms out, take your inhale. And then exhale, right elbow under left. Wrap the forearms, wrap the wrists, and press the palms together. Still stretching out outer hips, outer glutes, outer thighs. Still engaging inner thighs to support that. And of course, engaging your inner body, right? Lots of strength on the exhale, plug back in. On your next exhale, unravel your arms. Bring your left arm out to the left. Unravel that right leg, and then take a hold of your right big toe if possible, and extend the right leg out to the right. Not like that. <laughs> Right leg out to the right. If you cannot hold on to your toe, you're going to take a hold of the outer shin or even the outer thigh. Now your left inner thigh is hugging into midline. So if we were going to be sitting in this left hip, 
you could lift the right leg all the way up, right? That's not what we're doing. It's not bad to do once or twice, right? But over time, it's gonna break down the left hip socket. So we wanna be integrated and stabilized. Left inner thigh hugs in, and then we see how high the right leg will lift. One more breath here. On your next exhale, sweep the left arm up over your, alongside your left ear, let go of your right foot, bend the right knee, reach back and take a hold of the inner edge of your right foot with your right hand. The grip will be, those of you that have taken Bikram, same grip as Bikram, your palm is face up, the soft part of the elbow faces out. Inhale, let the ribs rise. And exhale, kick back now to stretch the quadriceps. You don't have to go far into this pose. In fact, you can stay standing, just holding onto the inner edge of the foot and then just kick your foot into your hand. If you do wanna go further, you're propelling yourself forward and back evenly and equally. One more breath. Good, exhale, release your right foot, bring both hands to the ground and your right leg straight up to the sky. Release your right foot down next to your left foot and fold it all back in. Inhale, slow extension. Plat your palms, jump back or walk back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, float the right leg back up. Bend your knee though. We're gonna keep the knee bent and bring the right heel as close to right sit bone as you can. Good. <clears throat> then we're gonna bring the right knee toward the forehead and forehead to knee. Inhale, right knee comes back up, right heel toward right sit bone. Point the right kneecap toward the ceiling. Exhale, knee to forehead, forehead to knee. One more time, inhale, lift. Draw that right heel in. Good, now bring your right heel toward your left. So it's crossing the midline. It's further to the left. Reach your left hand up. This one is just for proprioception and agility training. So we're gonna reach up with the left hand, find your right foot and hold on to your foot for a moment. You will fall out of this a bunch. The point of this pose is not to hold perfectly, but to be able to find the foot, bring it down, find it again, bring it back down, right? So the more you can send those messages actually, the better. Okay, take one more time, one more try, and then place your right hand, left hand back down to the floor. Bring your left knee down to the floor, left knee, and keep your right knee bent. Reach around with your left hand, and one more time, we're gonna take a hold of the inner edge of the left foot with the right, inner edge of right foot with left hand. Both elbows stay bent. Kick your foot back into your hand, and give yourself a nice stretch on the front of the body at the same time. This is another stretch for the quads. Hamstrings need to engage. So I'll take one more deep inhale. See if maybe your right knee can come up a little higher. One more exhale to coax that right heel closer to right sit bone. And then release your left hand down. Release your right knee down, take an in-breath. Stand up onto the pads of your toes, exhale, down dog. Deep breath in and down dog. And a strong, long emptying out exhalation. Once you're empty, jump forward or walk forward, inhale when you land. Exhale, crown to toes and ribs to thighs. Bend the knees, weight into the heels, rise up, Utkatasana. Exhale, left knee comes up, left toes tucked back behind right Achilles tendon. Arms reach out, inhale. Exhale, left elbow under right, wrap the forearms, wrap your wrists, press your palms. Elbows and knees line up with each other. Everything lining up with the center line of your body.
Good, let's take one more exhale and sit down even further. Unravel your arms, reach your right arm out to the right, grab your left big toe with the first two fingers of your left hand, extend the left leg out to the left. Remember, you can always take the outer shin or the outer thigh. Your first order of business is to stabilize with the right leg. Keep hugging in with your right inner thigh. One more breath. Back or bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand, take a hold of the inner edge of your left foot. Again, the soft part of the elbow is facing out, the palm faces up. This just gives us the most mobility through the shoulder. Kick back, reach forward. You don't have to go very far at all. Just negotiate even and equal forward and back, right? So the more you reach forward, the more you need to kick back. We are open already. We have been opening up in preparation for this pose. So as you continue pulling the right arm forward and kicking the left foot back, feel the stretch on the left side of your torso, the front of the left shoulder, feel that increase dynamically, right? Because it's not the first time we've asked this part of the body to open today. One more inhale here. And one more exhale to kick back. Good, now release both hands down. Shoot the left leg up to the sky. One breath in standing splits. Exhale your left foot down next to your right foot and fold in. Inhale to extend the torso. Flat the palms, jump back or walk back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend the left knee and bring it up. Bring the left heel toward left sit bone. Exhale, knee to forehead and forehead to knee. Inhale, knee is still bent. We're gonna point the kneecap toward the ceiling. Left heel comes into left sit bone. Exhale, round the back, forehead to knee, knee to forehead. One more time. Bring that knee back. <clears throat> this time we're gonna pull the left heel toward the right side. So the left hip is a little more open. Root down through your left hand and reach up to take a hold of your right foot. Bring the hand back down, bring it back up. Remember that this is not about holding it perfectly. In fact, with people who need that connection, it's best to go in and out of it on purpose to refire, to resend the message over and over again. So please try not to just sit in your joints, especially in the shoulder and hold rigid, but allow yourself to fall out and come back a few times. Good, now last time, right hand down, we're gonna to drop to the right knee. Keep the left knee bent and bring the left heel back so that your knee and your hip are in the same line. Reach around with your right hand one more time, kick your foot back and open up the chest. Really nice workout for your hamstrings, but you have to tell them to work because otherwise it's super easy to just sit in this right hip that's going to be the, where we release into. We'll just keep sinking to the right. So you have to decide, right, to re-engage left hamstrings. This is going to make you move more. Once you sit over into your right hip, you're not really moving or teetering and tottering. That's a good uh, little hint that we're letting the joint support us rather than the muscles. So I take another deep breath in here. Exhale, right hand down, left knee down. Inhale, extend the spine. Stand up onto the pads of your toes. Exhale, press back down dog. So it's hard work to stretch out. You know, that's my opinion anyway, that we should be actively stretching. And the hamstrings should be supporting every single one of those quad stretches. 
they deserve the workout, they can totally do the workout. Take a final exhale here. Jump forward at the end of the exhale or walk forward. Inhale, extend. And fold. Good. Utkatasana again, sweeping the arms overhead. Inhale. Then sitting down into that chair. And then we're going to straighten out the left leg. Reach down with the right hand just to grab the right shin for tree pose. Foot inside thigh. And the arms reach out. You can do arms overhead. You can have the arms behind you. We could do an asymmetrical pose, right? With uh, one arm up, one arm down. We can bend to one side. Whatever you're doing, make tree your own. But definitely keep pushing your left inner thigh into your right foot and your right foot into your left inner thigh. One more breath in tree. Please grow taller. Lift the ribs further away from the hips. Now sweep your arms back without lowering the ribs. So we stay open, we stay tall. Shoot the right leg back. Move into butterfly pose here. A butterfly is, is a diagonal line in relationship to the floor. Your chin is moving down and forward. Your right leg is moving up and back. Chest is open, body is tall. Arms are strong. Move slowly into that diagonal. Both hands come down to the floor now. Move into your forward fold. Bend your right knee, and one more time, we're going to reach back and kind of, in, in a way, we're, we're not really letting the quads know that they're supposed to be stretching here. But we are definitely stretching those quads again. So your left hand comes to the top of the right foot. Your right knee points up. We're sneaking in another stretch for those right quads. This time, though, your right heel is coming in to meet your right sit bone or get somewhere close to that. We're in a rounded back position. The crown is drawing toward the toes. Relax your facial muscles. Good. Again, make sure you're still having a little bit of that teetering and tottering going on. You're not sitting in the left hip socket. Finally, release your right foot. Step your right foot in to meet your left and fold it all in. Inhale to extend. And from there, jump back or walk back to a plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, the right leg will rise. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. And bring it back up. Do that two more times slowly. Remember, we take the time to touch the two together before we extend the leg back up. Last time. But at the end of this last inhale, we're going to do the, bring the right leg up a little higher. And we're going to bring that right knee back underneath us to the left. Bring your right knee back behind the left wrist. And now slide the left leg back. Coming to the top of your left foot. Walk your hands over to the right. You're going to have to lift up off of your right glutes. Walk over to the right. And then... Even though it's not going to happen completely, our intention is to get this left hip bone to square downward. Right glutes stay off the floor. This is a twist. And it's a really nice stretch that goes all the way up the front of the left thigh and into the left side of the, um, the internal obliques and the iliopsoas. If you would like to, bend your left knee, but make sure you're on your left thigh bone. Reach around and now take a hold of the inner edge of your left foot with your right hand. That's an option, but not, again, if it feels like too much on the left knee or your spine, just stay in the previous twist. Your left hip bone is moving down to hopefully be touching your right heel here. We're moving in that direction. Take a final exhale. Now release your right hand slowly, then unfold or straighten out your left leg if you had it bent. Both palms come back to the ground. Your right knee is still back behind that left wrist, right? So we're going to slide the right leg back up and back into downward facing dog. 
Deep inhale here. Strong, long exhale. Jump forward or walk forward, and when you land, inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, weight into the heels, rise up, Utkatasana. Right this time, exhale, straighten out the standing leg, your right one this time, bring your left foot inside your right inner thigh for tree pose. Doing whatever you'd like to with the branches of your tree. If you did take an asymmetrical pose last time, make sure you do the opposite side of that. You can always just move with it, right? Like there's a windstorm happening right? with that tree. We're rooting down with the sole of the right foot. Push right inner thigh into left foot. Push left foot into right inner thigh. Breathe to lengthen and grow taller. One more breath. Let's sweep the arms slowly back. Shoot the left leg slowly back. Butterfly. And maybe it takes a, like three or four breaths to actually get into that place where you're diagonal with the floor. Chin down and forward, left toes up and back. Open the chest. Let's see, one more inhale. In butterfly, make sure the fronts of the shoulders aren't collapsing toward the ground. Exhale, both hands down, bend the, uh, let's go into standing splits first. Bend the left knee now, reach around and take a hold of the inner edge of your left foot with your right hand. Stay in this forward fold. The heel is coming toward the sit bone this time. The left knee is pointing toward the ceiling. If it feels like it's too much, that means don't, on your left knee, let's say, okay, let's start with the left knee, and don't pull the left heel as close to the left sit bone. You don't have to force it at all. If it feels like it's too much on the right knee, we're probably hyperextending the right knee. So check in, make sure your shin bones are moving forward. Kneecap is being pulled up, not pressed back. And then and the right thigh muscles are engaged. Okay. Take one more exhale here. Release your hand down. Step your left foot down to meet your right foot and fold it in. Inhale, extend. Flat the palms, jump back or walk back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, left knee to right elbow now. Hug both elbows into midline, touch the two together. Extend back to the sky. Bring it back in. One more time, inhale up. Exhale, touch. Good, once you've touched the knee and the elbow together, slide the left knee back behind the right wrist. Slide the right leg all the way back, as far back as it'll go. Come on to the top of your right foot. Once you are there, we're going to keep the left knee over to the right, the edge of the right edge of the mat, and walk your hands to the left edge. Do all of this slowly. And try to get your left heel underneath your right hip bone, so that you can rotate that right hip bone down to touch the heel or get somewhere close. Now maybe we stay there. Right? Maybe that's enough of a stretch. This should already feel like a great stretch again on hip flexor, all the way up into internal oblique, and even into the psoas muscle here, psoas muscles. If you would like to go further, bend your right knee, flex your right foot, and reach around with your left hand. If you're doing this, by the way, bring your right hand back out to the right of it. Bring that around so that you can stretch the right quadriceps one more time. If it feels like it's too much on your spine, that means it's too much on your spine. That's why it feels that way. So please keep both hands on the floor. 
right? You could even keep your hands on the ground back out of the twist of it and keep the heel coming in on, on its own. Check in with your right knee. Make sure you're not on the kneecap. You're on the muscle fibers above the knee. Your quadriceps are on the ground. One more exhale in this twist. Slowly release the hand down. Then slowly unbend the right knee. Both palms on the mat. Step the left foot back. Deep in breath here. High push up. Exhale, chaturanga. Up dog. And back to down dog. Please notice how you're feeling here. Take one more breath. Strong exhale. Once you are empty, please bring your knees to the ground, to the outer edges of your mat. Turn your big toes in toward each other and sit back into a child's pose, what, reaching your arms forward. This is where we finally get to stretch out our inner thighs. They haven't, well, we did do that one where we we're opening up in our standing uh, balancing, but otherwise, the inner thighs have been working for us. So easy stretch here, which we will increase in a moment. Walk your arms forward. Let your armpits melt toward the earth. And move your sit bones toward your heels. Huge, huge breath into the back of the body, into the pelvis itself. Exhale, draw the sit bones closer to your heels. Please take one more full inhale, more to the back. And one more full exhale, more from the front. So deep, deep hollowing out of the front of the pelvis there. Walk your hands toward the inner thighs. Come back to where we're seated on our heels for a sec, and then bring your hands back behind you. Push down through your shins. Your knees are almost hanging off the mat. Claw the floor with your fingertips and make sure your wrists are neutral. Push down with the shins and lift the glutes. Again, another stretch for the quads and the hip flexors. We're breathing as deeply as we can to help feel like the feeling of stretch moves up more into the belly. Strong, long exhale from the back of the body, including your hamstrings. Now, the best cue I can give you here is to keep pushing those shin bones down as dynamically as you possibly can. When you keep just feeling the shin bones moving down, you're gonna feel a lot more of a stretch. The, the, by pushing the shin bones down, your hamstrings start to work more and that helps support the stretch on the quads. Take one more inhale here. One more exhale to really push those shin bones down, hug your spine with your spinal muscles, and slowly lower your hips, but as you do so, slide your heels out from underneath you so that when you sit down, you're seated on your mat and not on the heels. Take the legs forward, and let's slide right into the middle of the mat here. Clasp your hands behind your thighs and take an inhale. Exhale, pick up your right foot, take your right ankle, really I should say the edge of your foot. So the outer edge of your right foot is on the top of that left thigh. The ankle bone is hanging off to the inside. Walk your hands in, pull the right knee as far away from you as possible, and breathe. If this is too much, walk your hands back, especially if you feel just pinchiness in that right inner hip. You do not want to hang out in pinchiness in the hip flexor. So lean back and you might even feel a better stretch, right? Coming onto the elbows if you'd like. Lots of ways to get that hip to feel this. But if you can stay in that seated position and you feel like there's still further to go, walk your hands in closer to the glutes and start to bring the chest right into the shin. One more breath. No matter what, the right knee is not coming up. The right hip flexor is not pinching in, right? But, and then walk your hands back, no matter what, come into that seated position, cross right knee over left. <clears throat> so we're doing like a seated eagle pose. Draw both knees over to the left. Squeeze the inner thighs together, pull the sit bones toward the knees. This is a kind of a halfway into a supine twist here. I want you to feel this as lengthening through the right side of your lower back but more of a ringing out through the middle of your spine. 
Begin to turn your chest plate toward the ceiling with both elbows bent, palms are on the ground. And then turn your head to the right so that your chin is pointing toward the right shoulder. Notice how you, I'm not hunching the shoulders up to get the twist to happen. Shoulders are down, elbows hug in. Feel the stretch across the chest and then just mobilize just a tiny bit. Right, come out of this slowly because this is a pretty deep, intense twist. So bring your gaze back to neutral or your neck back to neutral. Bring your chest back to neutral and then bring the legs back up. Right, uncross your legs, come back to a seated position holding onto the backs of the thighs. Pick up the left foot. We're crossing the, we're placing the edge of the foot, the outer edge of the foot on top of the thigh, but the ankle bone, what we call the ankle bone, hangs to the inside of the right thigh. Walk your hands in, pull the left knee away from your shoulder. It's not coming in, that's not the stretch. Knee away from shoulder. Decide if you want to lean back onto the elbows to keep the hip flexor open. And maybe you stay there for a breath or two and you come up and say, okay, now, now can I keep the left knee forward so that I don't pinch up the left hip? Then can maybe we start to walk the torso in a bit closer. All up to you and the feedback your body is giving you. Uh, please take one more breath. Wherever you're at, take a strong exhale, go a little further. Maybe we walk the chest closer to the left shin. Now come into a neutral position so you can move that left knee, cross your left knee all the way over your right knee like you're doing a seated eagle pose. Draw both knees to the right. Before we go further, left sit bone toward left knee to bring the both knees closer to the floor and to lengthen out this left side. Hands are back behind you, palms on the floor, elbows bent. Just a little mobilization. We don't have this huge amount of mobility in our middle back, at least for most of us, right? But mobilize what you can. Uncover the movement that you can uncover. Then turn your head toward your left shoulder, making sure that your left shoulder isn't hunching up to meet your chin. Chin toward shoulder while the elbows are bent and both shoulders are spreading away from center line. Again, this is a really, especially if you're breathing deeply and actively, this is a very intense twist for a lot of us. So take your time getting out of it. Turn your head back to neutral. Straighten out your arms and bring your chest back to neutral. Then bring your knees back up and across your legs. Walk your hands in and take a hold of the backs of both thighs. Again, lift out of that lower back. Take your inhale. Exhale, flare the elbows out. Round your back on purpose. Inhale, elbows draw back, heart rises, chin up. And exhale, elbows flare out. Last time, elbows back. And elbows out. Right, this time roll all the way onto your back. Once you get there, bring those knees in and rock side to side. Reach your arms out to either side of the room. Just rock without using your arms. Eventually, please bring both knees over to the left and roll all the way onto the left side of your body. Reach your left arm underneath your head so that your the left ear is kind of resting on the bicep. Reach down with right hand, take a hold of the top of the right foot. And we're gonna stretch out those quads one more time. Now, depending on what your knee feels like at this point, I find that uh, if I kick in this position, it, it uh, pulls on my knee. I definitely have issues with the knee. <laughs> Long time runner and yogi. So I'm going to bring the heel in toward the sit bone for me. For a lot of you, that'll feel like too much on the knee. So again, it's just about getting the hamstrings to engage, a feeling of length and stretch in the front of the thigh. And then you just stay there and breathe to that stretch. We're not, we don't need to push further than that. I really like keeping the elbow bent. 
Check out the difference between keeping the elbow locked versus bent. It does help open up the right shoulder as well. So a little extra uh, stretch there. Take a final exhale. Roll onto your back. You're going to place the pads of your right toes to the floor as you roll onto your back. Keep the left knee where it is and place the left hand to the left inner thigh. Now, once you're on the sole of your right foot, we want the right heel as close to right sit bone as possible. Then start to roll onto the outer edge of your right foot to stretch out your inner thighs now. So this is a juxtaposed asymmetrical position. The left heel is well forward of the right heel. The right heel is close to the groin. The left outer knee is as close to the floor as possible. We're on the outer edge of the right foot and the outer thigh, the right outer thigh is coaxing the right inner thigh into a deeper stretch. The left hand is there to just keep the left knee close to the floor so that both inner thighs are feeling a stretch here. One more breath. Exhale, bring the right outer knee all the way down to the ground, bring the left knee up and roll all the way over onto the right side of your torso. Right arm reaches up, creating that pillow. Bend the left knee, take a hold of the top of your left foot with your left hand and bring your left heel to left sit bone. Bend the left elbow to open up the chest. If this is too much on the knee, Try bringing the knee forward rather than pulling it so far back. Try kicking your foot into your hand instead of bringing the heel into the sit bone. If you're already kicking and it hurts the knee, try bringing the heel in. Or you don't even have to hold on to your foot. I should have mentioned that well before now, but you can always just isometrically do the work, right? You don't need to use your hand to force anything on that knee. Glutes are contracting, hamstrings are strong. One more exhale. Make sure that you're feeling the stretch down the front of the left thigh, all the way up to the hip. Roll onto your back, standing up onto the pads of your left toes. Keep the right knee open and place right hand on top of right inner thigh. Then place the sole of your left foot to the floor, but keep that left heel in close. Start to coax the left knee open slowly. Again, asymmetrical posture. We're not doing uh, Supta Konasana. The left heel is in closer to the left sit bone, right heel much further away. Right hand on right inner thigh. Your left outer thigh is coaxing the left knee down. One other thing to check on is your lower back. This position can make you over arch the back and pinch up the back. If that's the case, lift up your glutes. Take your hands to the back of the pelvis, place the back of your pelvis further away from your back ribs and then take the pose. Your knees will probably be up higher and that's fine. You wanna stay in integrity and stability. Two more breaths here. I don't like using the left hand on left inner thigh because I tend to push too much. So you may want to just keep the left hand out of this, work your left outer thigh instead. Your right hand can be there though, because we know that the right outer knee can touch the floor or get somewhere very close. One more breath. Good. And now we're going to bring both knees. So take your hands to the outsides of both thighs, bring them in toward each other, into the chest, rock side to side again. Hands come to your shins, bring your forehead up to meet your knees, stretching out the lower back, shoulders away from the ears. One final exhale here. And then release your head, neck, and shoulders down. Extend the legs out to either side of the room. Reach your arms out to either side of the room. Shake out any tension. Stretching to me, I've said this before to you guys, but stretching is a lot like clean, cleaning, right? Cleaning our muscles, cleaning the tension, the tightness, the lethargy, the, the uh, memory of trauma or memory of injury or whatever off of the muscles. So at this point, you should feel cleaner, lighter, shinier, brighter. Like you gave yourself a, a nice massage, but also like you gave yourself a spring cleaning. I realize that we are over time. So I will hopefully, hopefully you can still relax for a few moments. But I will leave you here and invite you to relax. And thanks so much for joining me today. Namaste. Please, once you get up, walk around at least for a minute or two before you sit back down. Your, uh, your hips need that massage. All right, take care.